Hi everybody and welcome to my Needle Felted Fairy video. All of the fairies I make are inspired by the flowers that grow in my garden and this little fairy is inspired by the tiger lily rose that I have in my garden and I'm going to show you how to make her today. So what you need to make the fairy are some felt fibers. Now this particular one here is a hundred percent pure wool fiber. I also use merino wool fibers. They are much finer and softer, but either one will work perfectly well for the little needle felted fairy. You will also need some pipe cleaners to make her hands. And I have also some of these lovely silk fibers here that I've collected over the years. And I've used them just to make the little detail on her belt. I find as I'm making the fairies, they grow very organically. So I set out with a basic idea in my head and I go from there. So I will be trying to make the fairy as close as possible to this one for you though today, just so you know how to make the whole process. So I'm going to start now. So the first thing you need to do is to make her head. And for that, I use this peach colored fiber. And I'm going to separate it in half because it's quite thick. And then you just pull gently to separate the fibers. Smooth them out and then tie it in a knot. And have the knot right in the middle there. Then you just wrap the fibers around to make a circle. Hold them in place. And then you take your needle felting needle. Now these needles are very sharp. I use a medium sized needle and they're barbed at the end. So do mind your fingers when you're working with them. And you just start to insert the needle firmly all over the fiber. Now you'll see I'm working on a piece of foam here. And I also have a piece of wood underneath it to protect my table because this needle would scratch your table quite badly. All of the products I use to make my fairies are available on Amazon and a lot of them I also buy from an Irish company called Vibes and Scribes. And then of course I'm addicted to arts and craft shops and wool shops. So anytime I get an opportunity to visit one of them I keep an eye out for nice colours in the fibres. You can get really beautiful vibrant colours in the felt fibres. You just keep working around in a circle felting in anywhere where the felt is loose. Because this is just the basic shape for her head, it doesn't have to be felted very, very hard. If you were going to make a ball for one of your little characters to hold or something like that, you would need to felt it until it was good and firm. But I'm just making the inside of her head, so that's quite firm enough. Then I need another piece of the fibre. And to separate the fibres, you just pull gently and that separates them. I'm going to find the midway point, take a little piece of fibre from the end and wrap it around the centre here. And then just use the needle to felt that in place just to stop it unravelling on you. Then place it over the ball like this and smooth the fibres around the ball. So what you're doing now basically is you're making her face. So the round ball was the inside of her head and now you're making her face. So you just want to get it as smooth as you can and just keep working on it till you get the fibres spread around gently. So it's like that. Then pull a little tail from the end again and wrap it around her neck. And you can see there that has formed the head of your fairy. And I'm going to just felt that again with the felting needle just to hold it in place. And that is her head made. Now, the next thing you need to do then are make her arms. So for that, you need a pipe cleaner. 
this pipe cleaner is about six inches long. Now, if I wasn't going to give her sleeves, I have given this little fairy sleeves. So if you weren't going to give her sleeves, you would use your peach colored felt to go the whole way along the pipe cleaner. But I am going to give her little orange sleeves. So rather than wasting the felt, I'm just going to do one end. So I have one end done already, and that's what it looks like when it's done. So to make her arm and her hand, you just need a small piece of your felt fiber. And you just start a couple of centimeters down from the top and wind the felt very carefully, slightly overlapping it. Just take your time doing it until you get all the way to the end. Then you take a small bend on the felt, on the pipe cleaner like this, and then you felt back over it. And that makes her little hand. So just take your time and do it as neatly as you can. And then again, take your felting needle. Now, when I'm making these little fairies, I don't over felt them because I don't want them to be hard. I want them to look soft. So just felt it in enough that it's not going to unravel. So it doesn't take very much. The fibers map together very quickly. If you want it to be hard, you keep working on it until you have a hard surface. And they are her two hands made on the pipe cleaner. And then I want to add two sleeves. So I have this one done already. And for this, I'm taking my orange fiber and I always smooth my fibers out before I start. And for her sleeve then, I'm going to start in the middle and then work to the end using the same winding method that I used for making her little hands and keeping it as neat as I can. And then again, just wind the fibers back up so that it looks like this. And once more, take your felting needle And all I'm doing really is securing the fibers in place. And that's her arms made. So the next step is to go back to your head and have a little look at it and decide which side you think looks the best. So I think this looks the best. So that's going to be the front. Divide the fibers here that are her neck in half like this. Find the midpoint of your arms. Place the neck over the arms. Pull a little fibre from the bottom and wrap it around underneath the arms to hold the arms in place. Just like that. And again, a few little felts just to hold it in place. And that's what it looks like so far. Now, if you look at my fairy here, underneath her dress, you can see there's a yellow tone. So most of the time when I'm felting a fairy, I will always use two tones in her skirt. It just gives it much more life and body if you have two tones in it. So the first thing I have is I have this gorgeous golden yellow piece of felt here, felted fiber. So you take it, you bend it in half. Again, you're finding the midway point. So you bend it in half and open out the center of it like this. So you're making a hole in the center. The felt is staying attached together, but you're making a hole in the center of it. And you're literally popping her head through the hole. And 
and that's the underneath part of the dress. Now just try and make sure you don't leave any of the fibres behind on her head. And because this is the underneath part of the dress, I want to pull it really tightly before I tie it off. And take a spare piece of the fibre here and again wrap it around the middle very tightly so I don't make it too bulky. And again, belt it in just to hold it in place. So this is what you have now. So this is her underskirt. Then for the orange part of her body, I have an orange piece of the fiber. And again, I'm going to do the same thing, bend it over, find the midway point, make a hole in it, just very gently, handle the fibers gently and pop her head through. Gather it in neatly around her arms. Pull a piece from the bottom. and wrap it around the center of her body. They're kind of like um, the old fashioned, I don't know, the Egyptian dresses that they used to, or the Grecian dresses really. And again, felt that in. Now felt that in well on the front and the back because that is the finished outer layer of the dress so you don't want it to come apart. A little bit on the sides here under her arms as well. Just to make sure it doesn't come apart on you when she's finished. And really it takes very little just to secure it in place. And that's this bit. Now you will have seen I had this lovely little curl on the front of my dress. So that's one of the silk fibres here that I have. And you can use anything you have. You have to use pure wool to felt with. Acrylic doesn't felt. So I'm going to place that onto the waistband of the dress here and felt it into place neatly. You can only felt with pure wool fibres. Acrylic fibres don't felt. Because what's happening with the pure wool is when you're agitating it with the, the felting needle, the fibres are matting and holding themselves together. And that's the little belt added to her dress. Now I'll finish her dress off in a few minutes. But the next bit then we're going to do is give her her hair. So I've given this one long hair. I love making the hair, the different hairstyles on the little dolls, but this one has got long hair. So I have a piece of a brown toned felted fiber here. And again, smooth out the fibers, find the midway point and place it on top of her head. And hold it in around her neck. And then just think where the center parting is in your head on your own hair and felt along that line to secure the hair in place. Then turn her over and join the two outside ends of the hair into the center. and felt them into place, into her head. Try and make sure that the needle is not going all the way through and coming out to the front of her face. Because if you do that, you're carrying the fibers on the needle and the brown will come out through the peach color on the front of her face. So when you're felting her hair, make sure it's going into the circle, but not coming all the way through out to the front of her face. 
Now, when you have that done, you want to neaten the hair around her face. So tuck it down both sides of her head and just at the base of her head, felt the wool gently onto the side of her face. And then have a look at her and make sure you're happy with the positioning of the hair. So just have a look at her. You might have pieces that are up too high on her head. That might need to be felted down a little bit to make them neater. That's okay, I'm happy with that. And then turn her around and to make her hair finer and more wispy like a fairy. Just use your felting needle like a comb and comb the fibres out to relax them. And then these little taggy ends that are there, you can just pull them away. And then I am going to do the same thing with her dress now that I've finished handling her dress. I'm going to comb the needle through her dress. Smoothing out the fibres, allowing the two colours to show nicely through. And I'll do that all the way around. You do have to get to a certain point where you stop doing this because if you keep going, you'll end up with no dress because you'll have combed all the fibres away. But you do want to smooth them down, and make them nice and fine. And then again, just pull the loose bits off. I always keep the little loose bits as well because you can use them for making little hair pieces and little accessories. So you can't see the yellow very much here. So I'm going to move the fibres over gently, just so the yellow shows through a little more. And it's very difficult to make two of these exactly the same. And, then, and that's the basic doll made. Very, very simply, really. It's a very simple technique. Now, I want to give her a little flower for her hair. So to do that, I have a nice green here. So I'm going to start with that. I'm just going to roll it into a little ball with my fingers. And have a look at her little face and decide where I think her little flower in her hair should be. I'm going to put it here. Felt it in place and then just work on it until you have it gently in a nice little circle. Then I'm going to add a little tiny bit of my yellow to it. So these are my scrap fibers that I brushed out. This is why I keep them because for this little kind of thing, these little fibers are very handy. And again, just roll it into a ball in your fingers. Pop it on top of the green. And again, felt it into place. And just make sure when you're felting it in that you're tucking it in so that you can still see your green. And again, try and make sure the needle is not coming out through her face because you don't want the yellow fibers to transfer through onto the front of her face. And I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the orange fiber to that as well. Just a really tiny little bit of orange again. Just roll it into your fingers. Pop it into the center and again felt it into place. And I would ask you if you like the video to please like it and subscribe to my channel, which will be absolutely fantastic because I will be putting more videos up. And I also have a Facebook page 
which you will find listed below. And you could like my Facebook page as well, or come and visit me on Facebook where I post all of the fairies that I make. And by looking at them, it will give you some ideas of some more fairies to make for yourself. So I was just smoothing out her hair a little bit more there. So that's the little fairy made there. And now I'm going to show you how to make the little flower. So for her flower, I need another piece of pipe cleaner. So I need a small piece of the pipe cleaner here. And that makes the stem of the flower. And I'm going to use some of the green felt. And you make the stem the very same way that you made the arms. You just wrap the felt fiber around the pipe cleaner, the full length of the pipe cleaner. There you are. And then you just felt them to secure them. Now you can felt this a little bit more than her arms because this is the stem. So it doesn't have to be as fragile looking as her arms are. I'll leave it at that so you don't have to spend 10 minutes looking at me felting a stem. So that's that. And then for the little flower, I start off with the yellow and just curl it into a circle. And I'm going to start felting this. Now you will need to felt this more firmly than what you've felted already because this is going to be a flower that's going to... You have a look here. It's independent. It's, it's not attached to anything other than the stem, so it needs to have a bit of body to it. So it needs a little bit more felting than anything else you've done so far. And then I'm going to add some orange into the center of it. Again, I'm just going to turn it into a circle. Add it to the center. And you can see I'm just using the needle to manipulate the felt to get it where I want it to be. And then remove it from the felting board. And you can have a look at it, but it's very flat now at the minute. So I want it to be more rounded. So I'm going to hold it into a more curved shape and felt around the edges of it now. So I what I'm doing is I'm keeping in my mind roughly the shape that a rose would be, that lovely rounded shape that a rose would be. So just keep in mind the shape that you want to create and that will help you to work on your flower. Now you can see I have a lot of very loose fibers here so I want to just gently felt them in. Now you do need to be careful when you're doing this because it is very easy to poke your finger with this needle. When you're doing this and it hurts a lot if you poke your finger and just work on it until you're happy with the shape and the color that you have So I'm going to leave it at that now so you don't have to sit looking at me doing this all day. And then turn it upside down and I want to attach the stem to the underneath of the flower. I'm going to place the stem on top and felt through the bottom of the stem. So you can see how easily the fibres attach to each other when they're matting, when you're pressing them together with the needle. 
And the more you work on the fiber with the needle, the tougher the fiber will become. I'm going to felt this around it a little bit more now, just to get it a little bit more rose shaped. There's her little rose and I'm going to place it in her arms. So if you hold her in front of you, decide what way you would like her to hold the rose. Now I'm going to just have her wrapping her arms around the rose like this. And then you need to felt through with the needle to attach the rose to her arms. Lift this up a little so you can see what I'm doing. So you want your arms holding the rose. And then you can just check and see if it's in place. That's in place. Now this arm is not attached to it, so I'm going to just move this arm over and felt her two arms together. You can see the needle protruding there. Just because I want her two arms together holding the rose. Now, that should be it. And then you can just fix her skirt again. Every time you handle it, you're flattening her skirt a little bit so you just need to fix it then when you're finished the final thing then you will need if you're going to hang her the way I have mine on a little hanger here you can have a look there she's on a little hanger is a pure wool piece of wool so this is a little tiny piece of merino wool I have here it's just a cream merino an acrylic holder won't felt onto the back of her head so you do need it to be pure wool Turn her over. I've tied a knot in the bottom of this, as you can see. And place the holder on the back of her head. And felt it into place. And you can move a little piece of her hair then. Just to help to cover the holder in the back of her head. And then I usually take a small piece more of the fibre and place it over the back of the holder and felt it into place just to help to cover the holder up, make it neat. And again, just try and be careful to make sure you're not going all the way through her face. And then smooth her hair out. Once you have her made, have a look at her and make sure you're happy with her. I'm happy with the way everything is positioned. And there you have her. So that's the little fairy we're after making today, the orange blossom fairy. And that's the previous one that I had made. So you can see, even though I used the same colors and followed the same procedure for both of them, both of them are quite different. So every single fairy you make will be unique. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and I hope you'll come and subscribe to my channel where you will see me making lots more videos. Have a great day. Bye.